What is going on, everybody? I go by the name of Kari, and I want to thank you guys for joining me here today on Sneaker Fetish. Well, 2022 Yeezy Day is officially over, thank goodness. And there were a lot of surprises, a lot of interesting sneakers, some of which were a little bit better than others. And I want to talk about everything that happened. However, today, the main thing that we're here to discuss is the most highly anticipated sneaker, not just of Yeezy Day 2022, but of probably all of the sneaker community in quite some time. It's a return of a legend. Without further ado, let's get into it. Boom. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. This is the 2022 Yeezy Boost 350 version one Turtle Dove. It's incredible to hold this sneaker in my hand. This is, this is really crazy. It's kind of a full circle moment, but on top of that, it's just really wild that we actually got Turtle Dove's back after all these years. Never been retro, never been restocked before, but we got the sneaker back. Now, the first thing I'll say about this is that I really don't think that this should have had like the exact same style code. There are a few differences. There are a few modifications in this sneaker. And of course the packaging is different as well. They just made like a million of these boxes and they just slap different labels on them, don't they? So again, first things first, the packaging itself, this is not what the original Turtle Doves look like. If you guys remember that old school box, it was actually a little flimsier, but it had the flap on it and it just said Yeezy Supply on the side of the box. But that was, that was 2015, that was quite a time. So updated box, a few updated modifications on the sneaker itself. Let's take a little deeper look at the shoe and then we'll talk about why this shoe means so much. All right, starting with the upper of the shoe here. Now, classic Adidas Boost 350. Still can't believe I'm even holding this sneaker. One thing that I will say that a lot of people have been talking about is the shape of the sneaker being different. Now, I understand, I think the shape might have been a little more hunched in the 2015 version. It's up for debate, but it is what it is. Yeah, the shape is a little bit different, but the rest of the sneaker is literally the same. We got the one piece prime knit going all along the upper of the sneaker, something we had never seen before. Very, very dope. Exact same pattern, exact same color as the original Turtle Dove from 2015. You guys remember, the Turtle Dove is actually a bird, just like two Turtle Doves and a partridge in a pear tree. But nothing really different about that. Same old upper on this sneaker. Now, I will say the size, a lot of people have been saying the sizing is a little different. The sizing actually is a little more snug, but there's a reason for that we'll talk about in just a second. Taking a top down, look at the shoe here. Nothing different at all. We got the exposed stitching back on this shoe with those rope laces that are back on this shoe. Non 3M rope laces. You guys remember they used to start playing around with 3M on the laces here, but very, very classic, true to the OG form. I love the exposed stitching. You guys remember they started playing around with hiding it and then showing it on different models, but here, everything is true to the OG. Moving around to the heel of the shoe here, the emergence, the first time we saw the classic pull tab and nobody knew what in the world it was there for. All we knew was that Kanye put it on there, so it must be dope, but classic cream colored pull tab here with that same little red dotted stitching on the back. Flipping around to the medial side of the shoe here, that same patch of suede here with that embossed Yeezy. Very nice, very true to the OG as well. Moving to the midsole and outsole of the shoe, that same kind of plasticky feeling midsole and outsole that I remember from the OG model in 2015. That same boost pattern is back. You guys remember that OG boost pattern from back in 2015? They even brought that back. I love how they kept it true to the OG, even down to the boost pattern. Quick cut, you guys remember back in the day, this was probably one of the most fake sneakers. You guys remember the legit checks that went into this sneaker? Like people were really going down in the weeds, like looking literally at the thickness of the print, looking at the prime knit patterns, looking at how many little dots were on the back of the pull tab here, looking at how many little dots were in the boost pattern here. Like if you guys remember how fake the turtle dove was back in the day, like replicas ain't nothing new because these were being fake like crazy back in the day. And finally on the insole, classic turtle dove insole, all black insole with that co-branded Adidas and Yeezy branding on the heel. Also, you guys remember when I said that the shoe was a little more snug? It's because I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's actually more padding inside of the shoe around the ankle and the sock liner. I like it a lot because it makes the sneaker feel a little bit better and you can size it a little bit more appropriately. People were really struggling back in the day thinking that they wore their normal size and then they would get them and they were like either way too big because there wasn't enough padding in it and it was a mess. So a little more padding makes it a little bit more snug around the ankle. And that's pretty much it when it comes to the Adidas Yeezy Boost version one, 350, whatever you want to call it, reissue 2022 retro of the Turtle Dubs. The Turtle Dubs, we'll just call them that. It's a simple sneaker, but the beauty was not just in the simplicity, but it was in the messaging and it was in the impact, the cultural impact. Let me take you back to 2015 real quick. 
Kanye was a different kind of person between 2013 and 2015. If you guys remember in 2013, we got the Yeezus album. That was the follow up to my beautiful, dark, twisted fantasy. I hope I got that right. And it was interesting because on that album, we got really classic songs like Flashing Lights and stuff like that. But on Yeezus, he was a little bit different. He was a little bit more rebellious at that point. And a lot of people really didn't like the Yeezus album. It had like black skinhead and new slaves on it and stuff like that. So. Obviously, we knew that something was going on with Kanye, and in November of 2013, we were proven right in the sneaker world when he announced that he was leaving Nike and he was going to Adidas. Kanye really turned the world on its ear because obviously we had seen the Nike Air Yeezys. We had the Red Octobers that had dropped a little bit previously. That set the world on fire. So for Kanye to leave Nike to go over to Adidas, people were really excited to see what he was gonna do. But Kanye had an agenda. Well, I guess he kind of had two agendas. The first agenda was that he was gonna have more creative control to be able to build out his own brand, Yeezy. And the second agenda was that he wanted wanted to drive Nike sales into the dirt as fast as humanly possible. And the way that he was gonna get there was by making a sneaker that would kill the Nike Roshi, the second best selling sneaker in all of Nike at the time, right behind the quintessential dad shoe, the Air Monarch. Kanye literally went into isolation. He wasn't even making music for real. Now there was rumors at the time, if you guys remember around that 2014-ish, 2015-ish, people thought that he had an album coming out called So Help Me God or something like that. And remember he had the single that came out that was called All day which I still love that single but the album apparently got scrapped but in its place in 2015 Kanye came out of that isolation Valentine's Day weekend now this was all-star and New York fashion week with the Yeezy season one runway show for the first time we were really able to see what Kanye had been working on during the time that he was with Adidas and he came out with a few brand new models of sneakers one was one of my favorite sneakers really to this day was the Yeezy Boost 750 that was the first official release from Adidas even even though I've never got a pair to this day. And the second drop was what you see right here, the Roshi Killer, the Adidas Yeezy Boost 350, the sneaker that would literally change sneakers as we knew it forever. What was so unique about this sneaker? It looked like a Roshi. If you guys remember, everybody had Roshis on. If you guys remember 2013, 2014, everybody literally was wearing Roshis. They were cheap, they were affordable, they were only 70 bucks. They came in a variety of colors, different styles. All this type of stuff was going on and Kanye saw that and was like, I got something for you. And he made a sneaker that was almost triple the price of the Nike Roshi that literally turned the world on its ear because Kanye had that much influence. Literally the definition, the poster boy for the word influence. It was really kind of funny because if you remember when these dropped, how the world went crazy over them, Nike actually tried to come out with a triple red version of the Roshi run to try to bring people back over to the Nike side by making a reminiscent version of an all red sneaker, which by the way, you can debate me if you want to but it's not gonna get you very far. All red sneakers had to do with the influence of the red October. Any red sneaker that was coming out really in the last five years, we've called it the red October or we called it a triple red version that had that kind of influence over it. But I digress. So the Turtle Dove drops, it's complete pandemonium. We don't see the sneaker again for seven years, which is really kind of crazy when you think about it, but we never saw this sneaker again. We saw the Pirate Blacks. The Pirate Blacks came out, I believe, 2015. They restocked again in 2016. We saw a number of different 350s, version ones, version twos, all different colorways, but we never saw the coveted Turtle Doves again. Until Yeezy Day, which Kanye had his own thoughts about Yeezy Day, and it makes me wonder if he didn't want the Turtle Doves to come out. I don't know for sure, for sure. But if you guys saw the infamous DM that Kanye put out to all the different news outlets talking about how he didn't approve of Yeezy Day, and it was out of his control, and they took people from his team and they're releasing colorways without his permission and blah, 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 blah. Obviously, he had a problem with something that dropped during Yeezy Day. And I want to say it was probably the most coveted drop because everybody and their baby mama was going for the Turtle Doves. If you didn't get anything else on Yeezy Day, if you got the Turtle Doves, you were happy. Like, you were felt like you won for the day. Why do they matter so much, though? Because I know a lot of you guys were around in 2015. You guys may not really understand, like, why these? Why these are such a big deal outside of the fact that they were popular and they were the first Yeezy and kind of the general information. But guys, I need you guys to understand something. These were a moment in sneaker history. These were a milestone. Like if you're holding a pair of these right now, you're literally holding the reincarnation of a historic moment in history for sneakers. Like this sneaker really catapulted Kanye. This sneaker helped get Kanye out of debt. This sneaker literally changed 
everything about a lot of the ways that a lot of the brands were coming out with the product that were coming out with back then. Remember, runners weren't really a focus back then. People weren't really hot outside of the Roshi runner, but this really made runners be able to be priced higher at a $200 price point. And the thing that made these better than the Roshis was that the Roshis weren't really that good for fashion and casual wear. They were good for function and running, but this really blended those worlds. And to that point, a lot of people didn't think that those two worlds were able to be blended in a running sneaker, but Kanye did it just like Kanye always does. Then to double down, Kanye was wearing the turtle doves all over the place. Anytime you saw him, he had the turtle doves on to boost it up because again, the Kanye effect, right? Just like the bread Air Jordan ones, when he was wearing those black leather pants, everybody wanted those now, and the black leather pants. By the way, this fit, I'm not gonna lie, that fit is still fire, I'd wear that to this day. Now, final thought about these, honestly, I know that Yeezy Day wasn't the happiest day for everybody, but I'm not gonna lie. In my opinion, this is probably the best Yeezy Day that we've had to date, and here's why. All the heat got dropped on the confirmed app instead of Yeezy Supply, Adidas, thank you. If anybody from Adidas is watching this, Thank you for dropping these and dropping the real heat on the confirmed app where the bots couldn't get to it. Thank you for dropping all of the, uh, we didn't come up with another word for bricks yet, did we? Thank you for dropping all the bricks over on Yeezy Supply because everybody was botting that and whatever happens, happens. Hey, get your money if you can make your money off of them. But thank goodness these dropped on the confirmed app and even though the Q drop was rough, they even made good on that by offering exclusive access by the end of the night when all the drops were over with and they were able to get the app back working again for people that miss out on these. It really doesn't get much better than that, guys. I mean, honestly, I think that they did a pretty decent job with Yeezy Day given the traffic, given the amount of people that were going for all the sneakers. It could have gone better, of course it could have gone better, but hey, listen, the sneakers app glitches out on us as well. You guys remember the Travis Scott fiasco back in the day for the OG mocha highs? Nothing's perfect. No app is perfect. No drop is perfect, especially when it's a sneaker like this that has so much hype on it because you have hype mixed with wearability, mixed with nostalgic OGs, mixed with the new generation of everybody that wants these to resell. Personally, I think these are going for a little bit low on the resale market. 400 to 500 bucks for a turtle dub Yeezy? Are y'all crazy? I don't want to say too much about it because, hey, maybe I'll double up on a pair just to ensure that I can have two pairs for myself. But man, I mean, y'all see what the prices on the 2015 pair is going for, and that's for a reason. The OGs love this shoe, and they were willing to pay up for it back in the day. In any event, I hope that Yeezy Day was good to you guys. I hope that you got what you wanted. But if you didn't, now is your time to sound up down below in the comments. Let me know what you guys thought about Yeezy Day 2022 and what you thought about the Adidas Yeezy Boost 350 version one turtle doves were you able to get your hands on these or did you get something else this was my other yeezy day pickup here i got the 700 version 3 oz ils i also got the high res blue 700s that are lost somewhere in fedex land but let me know what you guys were able to get and if you were happy with your purchases or if you took the l sound up down below let me know of course already down in the comments make sure that you click on that subscribe button so we can welcome you into the sneaker fetish family to make sure you don't miss out on any more heat that comes through like these because i guarantee you i got a lot more heat on the way. As always, I want to thank you guys for joining me here today on Sticker Fetish, taking a look at these with me, unboxing them with me for a couple of minutes. I go by the name of Kari. This is the 2022 Adidas Yeezy Boost 350 Version 1 Turtle Dove. And until next time, I'm out.